Amazing. Uh, we have to hit a button. Oh, God. <laughs> There it is. Yes, that was the button that was like, That's yes, I am permission to go live. I can grant it or I am aware. Let me just lock this meeting as well on the just in case. There we go. All right. So we should be live. And I just want to check in with any participants in the chat at this moment to ask how the sound is. How is the sound, guys? Yes, Lee and yes. Sherry, can you say something? Testing, testing. Hello. 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 <laughs> awesome. Oh. Yes, Jessica B. Sherry does look beautiful. Oh, thank you. Anonymix, it's great to see you. Nalita, Melanie, thank you, okay. Cece. That's what I was looking for. I wanted to make sure the sound was okay. It was balanced. Everybody could hear everything. But we are paying attention. We're just sharing this to yeah. our social media sites please do that would be fantastic <laughs> we're both looking down like hey <laughs> come on everybody we're playing some solitaire over here <laughs> not happening I'm... that's not true <laughs> thank you so I'm much like, allison we'll figure out how to share this well i'll leave you two to share and i Got will it. get into the introduction i want to there first start by thanking everyone for being here it is wonderful to hang out with all of you here on a saturday for uh day six of shadow work week we began the week on monday of this week with a series of interviews with coaches medium psychics readers who all have been covering different aspects of shadow work that can show up as you encounter deep spiritual connection with a counterpart or step into your light work here on earth these conversations have been moving, they have been confronting and triggering, they have been inspiring, and you can catch up with all of them in the Shadow Work Week playlist, which you can find right here on the KMOON YouTube channel. If you're new, welcome. I'm your host for Shadow Week. My name is KMOON. I am a Twin Flame channel and Western astrologer, and you can find me here on New and Full Moons with messages for the collective on how to work with the energies in the light. You can also catch me here on this channel with cha the occasional channeled message. I publish them as they come through about collective energies and how to work with some of the timeless transformative energies of the Twin Flame connection. Today, I am joined by special guest Lee and Sherry Patterson. If you were with me yesterday, you encountered Lee here on the channel and were you in for a breakthrough and a treat? We're going to go a little bit deeper today with the two of them on how to heal the painful childhood. And after that, if you stick around, we've got a double header and we'll be joined by Dove and Nicole of Twin Flame Revolution, who will speak with us about long-term union shadow work. So for those of you who are heading into union and union now in union with someone who's a twin, not twin soulmate, divine connection, wow. call it what you want you will get to uncover and unpack what happens post-union and how to work with that energy and how to prepare yourself, whether you're in union or not, so that you'll be able to manage the triggers in a way that is aligned with your internal light. But back to today, we'll be having conversation with Lee and Sherry. You can find them over on their YouTube channel, Lee and Sherry Twin Flames. There will be links below this video if you are catching the recording so that you'll be able to chat with them as well. And if you're just joining, please hit this like button for me because I guarantee you, you will hear something that resonates with you today. Lee and Sherry, thank you for being with me. Oh. Oh, thanks so much for having us. We're so excited to be here. My treat, my treat and my pleasure. So um, let's go ahead and get into it. For those of you that aren't aware, just a quick overview. Lee and Sherry came together in 2005. They stepped into and sealed off their union in 2012, making it quote unquote official. There were still triggers after which another day we will talk about. <laughs> 
And furthermore, they've been working together uh, inside of their coaching business, Relationship Reinvented. They have coached thousands from all over the world between their YouTube channel and their private practice to create better connection and deeper union with self in order to facilitate better connection and deeper union with those around ourselves. I will jump into the interview now. I guess the first question I wanted to ask you is if you can explain how the connection with the parents can define the way our connections go later in life, especially when we might be unconscious about this. I know you talk a lot about the connection with the parents. I think you guys call this where you're connected from and the connection with the person you are in twin flame, soulmate, call it what you want, connection with, you call that the connection you're connected to. So talk to us about this, where we're connected from concept and how it can impact the people we are connected to now. Mm, mm, mm. Boy, you, boy, you said a mouthful. Um, sorry, go ahead and take Yeah. Okay. I'll, right. I'll, I'll follow behind. <laughs> When you're born into this world, you're born under two people, of course, depending on whether they stay together or they don't stay together, really determines a lot about what you will trust in connection. What ends up happening is after you're born, somewhere around the two, three-year-old mark, you start to notice that the love that you were receiving isn't the love you get anymore. This is kind of birth of your unconscious self. Um, it's like a remembering tool you remember that you weren't loved the way that you were before and you kind of lose connection or start coming up with rules to connection you don't even you're not even aware of it because of course unconscious self is a movement right i mean there's so many people across the planet that have a really deep form of unconsciousness um, and it's all related to the story of what they've been through not to say that what you go through and what you actually felt wasn't real, but the story you tell yourself keeps that feeling in a almost like a blocking phase. Like you don't want people to actually know what you actually feel, nor have you ever been taught to, te you, you were never taught to show that. So what ends up happening is as you get older, you have a story now that projects itself where there is none. So as you get older and then you find the connection, you go back to how you lost connection rather than go back to how you had connection. You're, not, you're free in it. And this is what people call the bubble phase. It's the letting go of the self that was none and kind of just stepping into your, your full awareness, aliveness. And you can share that. But it's almost like it's eternal bliss. But then your thought patterns show back up from the self where there really isn't one. And you kind of gravitate back to those feelings that you had and those wounds that you had. And that's what causes the triggering. We start building walls. Yes. Start uh, protecting ourselves from things that aren't happening. Then you start making it up in your mind. You start telling yourself, well, I'm not good enough or, you know, I'm going to probably be hurt. This person could really hurt me. And as soon as you get triggered into that, you start separating from the connection the way you did when you separated from the connection from your parents. You look for that independence so you can view them the way you viewed connection. And you can't see it because you're too close to it. And of course, <laughs> Sherry, when you created Root Camp, it was our ability to go back and look and find out where the unconscious self began. And we do that with asking 11 questions. And those 11 questions really help us navigate how you actually aren't connected to yourself. Because this connection really pulls you in a direction where you are connected to them, but you're not connected to you. Because that's kind of what you learn to do. Jerry, you want to add to that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. It's amazing how we do spend our life growing up thinking and saying out loud, I'll never be like her. Mm. I, I'll never be like him, right? Um, Referring to the parents. Our right? parents. We do not want to be like them. And, you know, 
my mother made some detrimental mistakes, some really bad. She made some really bad decisions. And uh, I made some really bad decisions. I made some detrimental decisions. And I had held so much over my mother for so long and then realized that I'd done something just as bad or maybe even a little bit worse, right? And um, then wonder, looking down the line, you know, why my kids are having issues, right? And now they're having kids, right? So these childhood traumas follow us and we spend so much time trying not to be them that we become them. Mm. 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 Thank you for saying that. Sherry, I, I mean, you've, you know, as they say, done the work, continue to do the work, all that, right? When oh, you... Yeah look at the common denominator between you and your mom that created both bad decision trails that you see, what would you say was the common denominator between both of you? What was it that led to that as the root? Thought process. Mm -hmm. Um, Our minds. Um, needing to needing trying to get by without asking for help trying to whatever it is it didn't matter um trying to do everything on our own um trying to look strong and be strong Mm. it was definitely a thought process got it it yeah which, like a pattern of thinking is what you're yeah. talking about. And yes. did that allow you, when you were hurting, who did you let be there for you? Right, her. And she, how did she handle it? Mm. Horribly, right? Yeah. So, and, and it wasn't her fault, right. but what ended up happening is once her mom handled it horribly, she didn't trust anybody with her hurt anymore. Yeah, which is common, isn't it? Very it, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And, very common. And then connection, you get hurt, and guess what? You don't do anymore. Then you stop but, trusting. Yeah, and that's why we found that trust was the first thing that gets broken in you. And then now the only thing you do trust is that you're going to be hurt instead of be loved. So mm-hmm. that seems to be a very popular algorithm when this connection arises, is that you don't even know where to look for that. Because you think the other person is doing that to you. You're not doing it to yourself. And what I mean by self, I mean the unconscious self is taken over. So it's, it's hard to break your unconsciousness when you didn't heal it to begin with. Mm. Mm. Well put, Lee. Thank you. Mm. So then I guess my question is, when you look at, you, you know, the totality of people you've spoken to and coached over the years, what are the top three challenges that stop a person from healing the root of that relationship with self and therefore repeating patterns in their love connections? Not embracing what they feel and staying in their head and then hiding what they feel and staying in their head. (laughs) <laughs> so it, it all comes back to what you're not letting yourself feel and what you're not letting anybody else feel in you like we all don't have this ability to let somebody actually connect to how we feel but we do the thing about when you let somebody connect to how you feel you don't need your words to do that if you're feeling hurt you know you need somebody to hold you you need somebody to hold your hand What we tend to do in connection is push everybody away, thinking that our hurt, they're not going to accept or they're not going to accept us when we're hurting. That's been us our entire lives. How much hurt have you been through in your life that you've actually accepted the you inside of that hurt? How have you sat with that you in there and actually loved that part of yourself that got hurt? Now, you don't love what happened to you, of course. But there was a you on the inside of there you could love. And you don't, you don't even see that because the hurt is too great. The hurt is too strong. 
So you literally will be self-destructive because that hurt is going to spill into everything that you choose. When you start to get loved, when you get loved, when you come out as a child, then you're taught that there are things and people that can replace you. Unfortunately, that's kind of the algorithm that's even embedded in the unconscious self is that things can kind of take the place of people. Mm, and that's what that's, things. Oh, that's anything, anything, <laughs> money, house, technology. School, technology, education, all these things that they put in front of you and say, you achieve this, then you'll be loved. And none of that will ever get you loved. Not really. It's just going to teach you to survive. But the thing that you're surviving is that you're not being loved. It's not fair. Your childhood was actually that far impaired from you that when you start to get older in this world as a child, you're wondering where all the love is. Ask a child, which I will tell you the truth. And we hear a lot. People go, oh, I sat down and talked to my inner child. And I'm like, think about a child. Does a child want to be talked at? No. <laughs> so, so you're pushing that child further away. You're not actually giving your... Remember yesterday when I was saying work and play? Mm -hmm. That child is going to gravitate to what's going to make that child happy and loved. The child is not going to gravitate to your work. <laughs> I've got to work on myself. I've got to fix myself. And the child's going, I don't know what any of that means. But so you're, let you're, me interject here. Let's go back. Because yeah. when I asked about the top three challenges to stop a person from healing the root relationship, mm -hmm. you said the first one was not embracing what we feel and staying in the head. The second one was not sharing what we feel and staying in the head. Who was the third one? The third one would be believing that this unconscious part of who you thought you've been through your memories, through your remembering is, is so far away from who you really are. It, it doesn't make you present. It doesn't give you a chance to heal. And it's almost like this continuous story you have to tell yourself to make sense of your life when it never made sense at all. So well, let me pause you right there. Let's, let me, let me ask some questions here. Sure. Um, this sounds like the unconscious makes some stories and then we decide to believe them. Is that what you're saying? What I'm saying is, is you had to do something with those feelings. So when you feel them, you go into an unconscious story of self. Okay. Okay. And, and it's and the stories and the that are causing the harm. The stories are causing you to reject what you feel. The stories are causing you to isolate and block mm. yourself from what you feel. It's like those feelings in you aren't allowed to be saddened. Those feelings in you aren't allowed to be shared. Mm -hmm. Can you heal what you don't let yourself feel? It doesn't work that way. Right. So when you actually have a story and you're carrying and you trigger that feeling or that feeling gets triggered somehow, when you go to your head, you're not paying attention to that feeling anymore, nor will you let anybody else. How's that connection? How's that not losing that child anyway? You lose connection to your child every second and don't even realize that that child is innocent and vulnerable and has to sit in what you're not letting yourself sit in. So let's take this home even more. Sherry, when you guys sit with clients, what are, you know, in these three areas, not embracing, then not sharing what we feel, and then sitting in this, believing the stories from the subconscious mind, what are the most common stories you guys see repeatedly with your clients? Oh my gosh. I'm not worthy. Um, Oh, I, I'm, I'm a bad mother, a mm. um, bad parent. Um, oh, my gosh. He's going to leave. She's going to leave anyway. Mm. Um, <laughs> um, but there's so many. It's all fear-based. There's so many. Mm. It's, it, and it really is all fear-based. Um, the fear of, of losing what we allowed ourselves to be vulnerable enough to get. Mm. Ooh, Sherry, say that again. 
(laughs) It is the definitely the fear of losing something that we felt vulnerable enough to get. Yeah. So we touched it, we taste it, and now we're freaked out. We got a story about it and we're going to, we're afraid we're going to lose it. So we believe the stories to build some walls, to protect ourselves from the loss, only to create the loss by believing the story. (laughs) That's a Chandler Bain moment. Can we get any clearer? (laughs) But it's like, you can't, Mm -hmm. you can't tell somebody that because each story is so individually unique it's not like everybody has the same story there's a billion different stories all with the same algorithm but a different trajectory in the way that somebody reacts to us you react your reaction is the issue and your reaction (laughs) is the issue your your reaction is the issue You, you, you believe what you tell yourself that's gonna happen based on what's already happened and you don't even see that's the hurt, the trauma. It's it's echoing in you. And you're not doing anything about the core of it. Mm. And would she, I, I remember when she sat with me and we would open up and share with each other. And she kept asking me questions about my core. And I would just, I get so angry and frustrated. I'm like, you don't need to know who I was. <laughs> it's like, but in my mind, I was defending all of those hurts. Because yeah. I didn't want I didn't want her to love me less based on things that happened. And she didn't want the same thing. Right. So it was our children that kept coming together going, yeah, but this happened to me. And then we would both be like, and there was no judgment. So you believe that you're going to be judged because you've been practicing judging yourself. Right. Your whole life. Whole life. (laughs) Wow. Well, I mean, this makes sense, right? This is, we, we now see how the cycle can get on a loop and it's, it's easy enough to say, well, you just have to love yourself. Well, you just have to be with yourself. Well, you just have to feel right. Like that we can, say that but what about the people who have gone through sexual abuse physical abuse verbal abuse what if those quote-unquote stories about abandonment or neglect or abuse are rooted in factual lived experiences they've had how does this person heal it's interesting that um coming coming from the actual victim standpoint um it it's so hard but then it's it's the same pattern process it's it's the exact same i mean it it's it's something that happened to my mother it's something that happened to me it's something that happened to my kids it's something you know what i mean it it, it it goes, it goes down the ladder still. And which is, you know, hopefully one day, you know what I mean? Generations down the line, see this and, and, and want to continue to break these cycles and, and thought processes. It's just, um, it's something that I had to look at my mother and, you know, my mother was ignorant to so much. And I use that word very, I use that word very lightly. I, that's the only thing I could come up with is. Speak in specifics for us. What happened and what did your mom do or not do? My, I was, I was being actively sexually abused by my stepfather my mother actually walked in as this was happening and she shut the door behind her and left and left me there with him. And I remember being so relieved that my mom knew and that I wouldn't have to, I wouldn't have to deal with that anymore. And I was so I was so relieved. It felt so good. 
And he got his clothes on and he went upstairs and I was shaking. I was crying. I got my, my clothes on and uh, we went up, I went upstairs after him. By the time I got up there, he had already had my mom convinced that it was all me and it would never happen again. And whatever he had to do, get counseling or whatever, it never happened. But she kept him in the house and he continued to abuse me. And uh, so there was a lot of unforgiveness there for a very long time. And as I find myself, as I found myself forgiving and letting go, it could have been a year later, something would trigger me and it would come back. And until I got all that out, did I really start? start healing did did I really feel like my mother understood what I went through and what I went through because of her actions right um did I even begin to start the forgiveness process and being able to to be with her without resentment or holding that in my back pocket to bring out at her later um, it really did take a, a, a long time and a process. And, you know, I, I, I look at my mom's childhood and I don't know much about it. I do know that she was also sexually abused. Um, and nobody, nobody stepped in to rescue her. Nobody stepped in to make that situation any better. Um, you know, back then, even, even, you know, when I was abused, it was not to be talked about at all. It was not to be brought out at all. Um, and I'm, I'm watching as, as I attempted to not be like my mother, right. Um, I ended up making mistakes as well. And, you know, I, I don't, I don't particularly, um, I don't particularly want to see my mother as a horrible person. Mm. I did for so many years. I don't, I, I just, you know, I recently went through a, a very near death experience and I didn't want to, I didn't want to leave anybody with any kind of um, open wound per se. You know what I mean? I wanted to I wanted to make sure that um, the relationship that I had with everybody in my life was okay. And then there was a point where I realized that, you know, there are some situations that will probably never, never get better. And at that point, you have to, you have to assess the situation and wonder if it's healthy so many years down the line, you know, 20, 30 years down the line, is it healthy to keep holding on to resentment, holding on to fear, holding on to, well, if I, if I'm vulnerable with this person again, I'm going to get hurt again. Um, You know, it's, it's, it's hard, but it's doable. It's definitely doable in every situation, not just, not just sex abuse in every situation. And, but especially in sex abuse where it's such a, it's such a touchy and hurtful and painful experience for everybody involved. Um, I'm just, I'm, I'm happy now. I'm glad now that, you know, we're able to talk about it a little bit more openly than we ever have been. Um, I still get angry. I still get angry at the fact that the statute of limitations was up and I, I really should have done something about that. You know, when I was in my, when I was in my twenties and early thirties, I still had time, but I was busy building a family, making my own mistakes, (laughs) you know, trying to be married at a young age. And, uh, I was busy by the time the anger hit me the statute of limitations is up, but I couldn't do anything legally about it, which mm. made me more angry. Mm. And um, so it just, there are times when it's, it's it, there's a, something, it could be anything that's triggering. 
so many things. I mean, it's even been the wearing a white t-shirt triggered me at one point. And uh, because my stepfather would come home and take his dress shirt off and he would hang around the house in his white t-shirt. Mm. And uh, little things that trigger like that. The, uh, the forgiveness though, it, the, the most important thing to know is I couldn't forgive anybody anywhere for anything until I forgave myself. And so many people out there are going to think, well, you don't have anything to, you know, forgive for you didn't, you, you know, you were young, you were a kid, you didn't have anything. It wasn't your fault. And it was not my fault. However, I for, I had to forgive myself for not forgiving myself earlier, mm. <laughs> for not forgiving myself a long time ago. I had to forgive myself for that because I, 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 I had unforgiveness for me for not standing up for not. I mean, I was a strong, I was a strong kid. I was a strong teen teen. And to let this, this big man overtake me, the thought now just pisses me off. You know what I mean? Uh, But back then I can just remember the fear and, you know, all the things that, you know, he was, he told me he was going to do if I said anything. So I, I stayed silent. So that took a lot of forgiveness in me to forgive me for not punching him or hiding a baseball bat under my bed or so many things that come to my head. You know what I mean? <laughs> now they, they didn't come to my head then, but now as I had, you know, spent so many years pondering on what I could have done, what I should have done. Right. And building up all that unforgiveness inside of me and resentment for myself. Right. And on top of that, putting all of that on my mom, all of that on my mom. And she had no idea. Um, She was sitting in her building her own guilt for walking in and not saying anything she was already starting to build her own self-hate, you see. Um, And I had already started to build mine. Thank you, Sherry. Powerful, powerful conversation here about forgiveness and healing and breaking cycles of pain and abuse. When I think back to where you started the share, if I recall correctly, one of the things that you said was the, the algorithm for healing is the same as the, what it is for someone who has not been through that. There's the feeling as opposed to staying in the head, then they're sharing as opposed to staying in the head. And then there is dissecting what we've created as the stories around not being loved, not being able to connect or not being worthy. And the the only piece that seems an additive in what you shared would be the forgiveness. And that's, that's the dangerous part. Let's hear it. First, you have to ask yourself, what is forgiveness to you? And what so is it? it, it well, what, what, what would is you, forgiveness? What, what have you felt? What have you seen from even from an astrological standpoint? Forgiveness actually is. If you really look deep into it, everything that you feel has to be involved in forgiveness, right? So if you want to really look deeper into forgiveness, realize that. You know you're in forgiveness when you no longer have a reaction to the feeling. Because the reaction is how you don't forgive. Right? I mean, if you get you have that feeling in you and it gets triggered, how you handle or how you embrace the feeling will determine whether you've forgiven it or not. It doesn't matter if you've been sexually abused, physically abused, verbally abused. The feeling that arises in you is what causes you to be triggered. The trigger is the reaction. 
If you can sit in that feeling with no reaction, you're forgiving and you're healing. So let me, let me break that down. Cause you're not actually saying that forgiveness means you don't have the feeling. You don't have the trigger. It's disappeared in some way. You're not saying that what you're saying is that feeling, that memory may come up. It's how you're responding to it and being with yourself in it that is indicative of the forgiveness or not. Is is that would you agree with that, Sherry? Yes, for sure. Um, I am now able to speak about my sexual abuse often without crying, right? And without um, getting angry. However, I can be sitting on the couch and something come across the television or a smell come across and, and I, then I can feel angry. I feel angry, right? Um, but instead of, instead of picking up the phone and making some really bad phone calls or, or, or however I'm reacting, I want to react. I just really sit in that pain and, and allow it. And I allow myself to feel it for however long the fleeting moment is. Um, they don't not last long these days because I allow that to happen. I allow that to flow through me and, uh, and accept it. That's the big thing. Mm. Accepting that I feel that way still. Mm. And accepting that I'm always going to feel anger when it comes to that. Always going to feel anger. However, in the forgiveness in that, it's not something that I carry with me every single day, all day long. It's not something that's that I carry on my shoulders all the time. It's something that I can freely and lovingly talk about and, and understand that. I can be in forgiveness and in love and be in that space with my mom even and love her and be in forgiveness for her. And she may say something, (laughs) you know what I mean? Something very fleeting, something very simple that may trigger that inside of me. Yeah, but you didn't, you know what I mean? And, uh, um, but not verbally speak that and know that that's my thought process. And that's not how I really feel about my mom. Right on. Thank you. Thank you. It's, I am so grateful for the way that you've shared the experience, the way you have validated that the feelings may always be there. And that the feelings are what dictates whether you've forgiven or not. It's how, what you do in response to said feelings. Do, are you trying to do anything and everything to distract? Is food, sex, TV, work? Are you doing anything and everything to externalize? Blame, shop, like go over here with some other people. Um, are you actually being with it? and just allowing self to feel it um, and not run away from it either by shoving it down or pushing it out. That that's the difference. I'm so grateful you shared that about how to heal. So I guess my next question is uh, there's so much more we could do here. (laughs) (laughs) This is not a coaching program. (laughs) No. But root camp is available for those of you who want to go deep into this work and have the kind of freedom that Sherry's just demonstrated here and the kind of clarity that Lee has brought to the conversation as well. Uh, there is a way to be able to work with Lee and Sherry. I'm going to drop that link in the chat now so that if this is something you're like, yeah, okay, I need this. <laughs> <laughs> this is the conversation I need to be a part of in my life right now, because whatever this is that we just talked about, I'm already feeling something shift. I'm feeling something healing. If you're recognizing that within you, then I want to invite you to go ahead and connect with Lee and Sherry for a free 30 minute conversation. Um, it, 
especially if you've never spoken to them before, I believe it's for people who haven't taken them up on the free conversation before. If you've already done it and you're like, damn, I'm tempted to do the free conversation again, that's your signal. It's probably time to do root camp and do some deeper work with the two of them. I myself have done it looking at going back to do some more because I can already see there is these two, these two will help you really move difficult, stuck, repetitive cycles. And so I'm going to find that link and put it here in the chat, but Lee and Sherry, can you just, as we close out today, share a mini exercise to get us back in touch with connecting with ourselves. On the inside, you know, you, you still are very much a child. Um, and if you're not taking time throughout every day to let that child just do something that child loved to do, you're not finding a path back to being connected to you. Um, so, you know, find something simple. If you love to draw as a kid, draw. If you love doing crossword puzzles, do a crossword puzzle. If you like to go outside and swing on the swing set, go on the swing. We watch people around us do things that are very childlike. And it's interesting because they're like, I wasn't really feeling like doing this before, but all of a sudden I feel like being a child because you need to be that child. The child is not gone. So do something you love to do as a child that you just don't give yourself anymore. And don't make excuses. Oh, I didn't get the chance to do that today. Because that child in there is going, you're being just like mom and dad. <laughs> and you're not even listening to that, but that's kind of important. Um, I see Cher Sherry does a lot of things that are that are in that space. And I'm like, oh, you did that as and she she has this love for music like no other. And she said she's had it since she was a child. So she literally wants to just blare the music. And even if it's a song that she just heard for the first time and she's in love with, she'll play it 25 times. And I mean, now it's like, it's so cool because it, I can see how it attaches, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And my child wants to come out and go dance with her or just listen to the music with her and we listen to the words. We even have lyrics put on us. So what I guess I'm saying is connect with that child. Don't, don't tell yourself you're going to talk to the child. You're going to converse with it. That's not what this is. You had feelings as a child that were very free and vulnerable. Let that come out. You'll be surprised at how quickly connection turns around because you do that. Yeah. Do you add anything to that? Mm -mm, you said it. it it's <laughs> it's so it. much, it's like we, we become adults and we become those, we become our parents to that child on the inside. Mm -hmm. We don't even see that. That's that's one of that unconscious awareness or the unconscious self that's been created. You become what you think your parents thought they wanted you to be, but you were never allowed to be yourself. Be the you that doesn't require self. Be the awareness, not, not, the, not the actual story. <laughs> and I know that that may be a lot to unpack, but you know what? You're worth it. And you're not telling yourself you are. Beautiful. So that's a little takeaway you guys can make time on your Saturday or Sunday to do or whatever day you happen to be finding this recording. Find a way um, to jump into doing that thing your inner child just loves to do and does innately. Let's uh, move into listener Q&A. Anonymix asks, how do I forgive the mother that enabled my father abusing us both and my brother while I'm still living with her, projecting the same patterns on to me? Okay. How do you have those feelings and not hide them from your mother? How do you tell her, how do you tell her you want to heal those feelings? Because if you're not open with those feelings, you become your mother to yourself anyway, whether you live with her or not. So don't treat your feelings the way that you believe she treated them. It's your turn. You're allowed to feel what you feel. You don't have to attack. You don't have to confront. If you're gonna do, if you can already hear in yourself, well, if I go to her, she's gonna say, that's you having the conversation as her inside yourself, doing that to yourself. She's not doing that to you. 
as we get older, we realize there's things we want to heal with our children, but they're so busy being us in their heads to themselves, they can't actually allow us to connect anymore. And we did that to our parents. So as you can see, that slips through connection. But once, if you actually become aware of it, you get to change. You don't have to be them. You get to be you, the you that doesn't have a story. So I, I, I realized too, while spending time with my mom um, and her actually living with me for a little bit of a time, um, it, I realized that holding on to that with her was keeping me prisoner. She wasn't prisoner. Um, I wasn't punishing her. I was punishing myself. Um, I was holding on to so much. Um, and it, it made me realize that I, I, I wanted set free, <laughs> right? I, I wanted to be free. Um, that really was what helped me is me wanting to be free. Mm. Thank you. I really appreciate the answer to that question. Such great content. I really appreciate you guys. Okay. Next question. Um, Journey Home wants to know, um, she asked specifically, how have you seen your own healing show up as generational healing? And I also would like to add maybe an inflection or another color to that question, which is if someone wants to create generational healing, you know, they're seeing something that happened to their mom, happened to them, and now there's something going on with their kids. What is the biggest, most impactful, number one, must do, cannot skip step? Um, the first step is you have to vocalize what happened and then you have to accept that it happened. Um, so that, that's big because we walk through life, a lot of us, and just sweep it under the rug and don't ever talk about it. And the more we stay silent, the bigger it gets. Mm. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> it, it, Silence just, and secrets are very toxic in yeah, any it, connection. They continue to grow and grow and grow. Mm. So, um, the, you know, the very first and most important step is acknowledging that it happened. And, and realizing that it wasn't your fault. And I think just to add to that, asking yourself a deeper question, if you don't talk about it, how are you connected to the you that it happened to? Because you're not going to heal without a connection to the you that it happened to. And we find that most times, more, more times than not, asking the simple question, are you, do you love the girl that this happened to? Do you love the guy that this happened to? And most of the time you see them going, yeah. And their head is shaking, no, but they said yes. So it's like, oh, look at that civil war. And they don't even see it. They don't, it's not a, it's not even registering with them that their head is shaking, no, as they say yes. This is no. <laughs> and it's so funny because your body will, Sherry said to me a long time ago, she was, your body always tells the truth. I'm like, what the hell does she mean by that? And she would say, she would point out, why is your head shaking unless you're saying yes? I'm like, so then it became almost like an awareness that was aware that, wait a minute, there's something in me that's not necessarily saying yes. And have I investigated why my head shook? No. We brush, that's where she's saying we brush it under and we, we kind of shuffle it away. Um, if you sit with Lee and Cherry, it'll probably be me because she's still healing. Um, <clears throat> you'll find that I'm going to be focused in feeling. I stay in the feeling and I pay attention to the way your body's responding to what you're saying. 
and many have tried practice to come on screen and try not to do it but they always they always stumble into it because you want to heal um you got to let those reactions tell you the truth right because mm -hmm. those reactions are how you start to heal if you keep hiding those reactions or thinking those reactions don't matter are you making sure that those reactions aren't coming out how are you going to heal the reactions is that's the path. That's the yellow brick road to Oz. I mean, that's literally how you get your heart, your courage, your 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 brain. You 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 literally can align all those things and stand in front of the wizard and say, "I want connection," but you just don't want to go on the yellow brick road. And you sure as hell like love flying monkeys. So it's almost like drop a house on yourself and come come follow that road. I'm sorry, I don't mean to use Wizard of Oz, but sometimes that's what it feels like. It feels like our childhood follows the stories that we were told. We welcome analogies on this channel. Thank you. Oh, I try. <laughs> Sammy Axtell asks, how do you allow our, um, how does one allow themselves um, to let go of all of the patternings around conditional love and actually begin to trust other people? What do you tell yourself the truth about? What do you tell yourself the truth about? And who do, you who do you share the truth with? Um, the truth, let's, let's, let's be clear what the truth is. The truth isn't your judgment. The truth isn't confrontational. The truth is the truth. Um, she always wanted the truth from me, but I had an algorithm in me that always lied to connection because I believed that I wasn't going to be loved for whatever the truth might be. So when I actually realized I had that, I went in and went, okay, why don't I tell the truth? And there was something in me that said, if you tell the truth, you're not going to be loved. And it's like, where did I get that? And what I had done is I had told myself that a whole bunch of behaviors that other people were doing was how they weren't going to accept me or my truth. When in truth, that was me not doing it. And then believing that's what their behaviors were reflecting in not realizing because I believe that that's the only behavior I was paying attention to. Does that, yeah. that, that hopefully that lands somewhere deep in you because the truth will be that you're doing that. Mm. The truth will be why you're doing that. The truth will be in the feeling and the feeling is the truth. What you think about that feeling isn't. Let's just land in that. Right. And just kind of like yeah. try to balance for a second. <laughs> it's like that's that first step of flight that you don't know you can have. Mm, yeah. Thank you. Thank mm. you. Thank you. Thank you. This is such a great question. I think this might be our last. Um, Deidre asked for a little bit of clarification on something that you guys you touched on this earlier. But this is, it's so important, I feel like, to kind of unpack this a little bit and these kind of soul connections. She asks, is it essentially my pure inner child who's recognized and open to love with my twins' pure inner child? Yes. <laughs> the, the, the simple answer is yes. The complicated answer is your mind doesn't like that. <laughs> your mind doesn't. Your mind doesn't want you to do that at all. Your mind wants to go. Yeah, that would be but, way too easy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but remember, all the stuff you've been through will be what lands on that child and the other child, and the other child will be the one that reflects back to you how you responded to your parents. So it's really interesting in connection how that child. When Sherry reacts to me, I'm that child and she's the parent. And I respond to her the way she responds to her parents. So she's getting the other side of her reaction or getting the other side of her belief. Right? Yeah. So yeah. like, she, she, she would, why are you keeping this inside? Why are you holding this back? And I look at her and I become her and I look at her and go, 
I'm not important enough to you, right? And that's literally what we would say to our parents. And now she's getting, wait a minute, what do you mean I'm not important? You sure are, I've never said that. But in my mind, I sit in her belief system. So yeah, you, you are those children, but you're also going to look for those disconnect points and be, and become the disconnect of that connection. You'll gravitate more to that because you're scared that that's what's going to happen anyway. Yeah. It's the false protection of projection. Just It's pro- what it's the safety and protection of connection. That is the disconnect. Yeah, That's why you disconnect because you believe you need to be safe and you need to be protected. But it's false. Right. Because a child is vulnerable and innocent, which means they're open for everything, mostly for love, but they can get hurt. If we could all come into this dynamic as children and stay as children, that there's your answer. Yep. So that's the answer to everything. It World is. peace, even. Right. <laughs> we can all, if we would all listen to children as elders, right, <laughs> we, we probably would all have connection. Mm-hmm. It's just hard to see. We get old and then we have that story in the mind and that's your, that's your perception. Your perception isn't your reality. Your perception is how you avoid what you feel. The children are the awake ones. <laughs> hey now. <Yeah>. Hey now. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you so much. Drop it down, it's on. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. What a treat. I am so grateful for the two of you being here with us today. We do need to stop here, but if those of you who are recognizing, okay, yeah, this is this is my conversation. I've been hooked from the beginning or since the moment I joined in. I know I need this. It is time for me to heal some of these things. I'm ready then the next step would be to jump into a 30 minute conversation with Lee and Sherry. There's the link. The conversation is free humans free, (laughs) but the best part about it isn't necessarily that it's free because once you've had it, you'll be like, ah, there should be a price for this admission. The best part about it is that it's basically like they open up your skull. They take a peek at your brain They reconnect certain wires so that you can never go back to seeing things the way you saw them prior. And they can Mm. do all of that in just 30 minutes. And if you've already done a free 30 minute with Lee and Sherry, then I strongly recommend you use the time to talk to them about how you can make root camp your next step. I know sometimes periodically they will run a special to make it really affordable. I, they worked with me on payment plans. I know they will work with you. (laughs) Um, there's never been a time here on earth where healed enlightened beings have been more needed than now. Mm -hmm. And so I really strongly encourage you, if you know you're dealing with these themes and issues, if your childhood continues to place itself out of your past and as goggles between you and your beloveds in the present, please talk to Lee and Sherry. They will get your mind right. Mm -hmm. Lee and Sherry, I thank you so much for being here with me. It is always an honor, 100% a pleasure. You guys have done so much for me and my connections. And I just, I'm, I'm just, anytime I can talk to you and share you with other people, I'm over the moon about it. If you haven't already hit that like button, (laughs) please do hit the like button, especially if you enjoyed the content today and join me in a roughly 30 minutes from now when I will be joined by Dovin Nicole of uh, Twin Flame Revolution. And we are going to unpack long-term union triggers and what those look like, what to expect. You're already in union or moving towards one. The way all of that unfolds in term in terms of being with someone long term, regardless of what you call your union. Mm. Lee and Sherry, it's a treat. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much for having us.